Hey guys, it's me, Soren, back with another video. So this gonna this video is gonna be about something that I've noticed for a while now, and that I kind of briefly touched on in my um, Black Joy's Revolution video, but one that I kind of want to talk about again in a little bit more um, specific terms. So last week there was this really, really, really awesome trending tag, um, hashtag, whatever, trending topic, whatever you want to call it, um, called Black Women Did That. And it was really, 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 really great and just amazing and wonderful. Um, Anthony's, at Anthony's, of course, I will include his Twitter handle in the description box, um, along with some of his other followers. They, he sent out this blast like, oh, let's come up with a hashtag to kind of honor Black women. And someone replied with black women did that and he started tweeting these tweets of you know black women of just not only black women throughout history that have done monumental things but also you know just just black women in general your mom your sister your grandma your neighbor you know someone that has just done something a black woman that has just done something you know incredible and it was really late <laughs> it was like midnight one o'clock in the morning i was still up because i barely sleep uh insomnia gang and this bitch um it's it's been better now because i've been watching asmr videos but i was awake and i saw the hashtag and i was like oh this is like a dope hashtag like i want this hashtag to trend so i started like retweeting 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 and putting up some tweets of my own i put up a tweet about shaka khan i put up a tweet about um Kendra Harrison, who recently broke a 28-year-old world record in the 100-meter hurdles, um, which went viral, which is still getting retweets even now. Um, it's at like 5,000 retweets or something like that, which is probably the most retweets I've ever had a tweet fucking get. So, and I was up for like two, three hours. I was up until like three o'clock in the morning, like retweeting, 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 retweeting before I like forced myself to go to sleep. And when I woke up, the hashtag had like blown up like the hashtag had really taken off there were over a hundred thousand tweets really just like positive tweets using the hashtag and it tr it trended for like 16 hours it trended for like most of the day there were a lot of really cool um pieces written about it which of course i will also include links in the description box and just a lot of people learning a lot about you know contributions that black women have made throughout history that we are not given you know our credit for because there was a lot of kind of like historical stuff Stuff. Um, someone tweeted about Dr. Myra Adele, Adele, I can, I feel like I can never, to me that looks like Adele, A-D-E-L-E, -E. to me that looks like Adele, but I'm 100% sure that's not how it's pronounced, I think it's Adele, not Adele, not Adele, Adele, Dr. Myra Adele Logan, who was the first woman ever, the first woman ever to perform open heart surgery and was a black woman, um, there were lots of inventors. There was Alice Parker who invented an indoor heating system, which really paved the way for the heating systems that we use today in our homes. There were all of these, you know, there, uh, it was Shirley Chisholm, which Anthony said that the inspiration behind his starting the hashtag was the DNC and Hillary Clinton formally accepting her party's nomination for president. And Anthony's actually was tweeting about Shirley Chisholm. She was the first woman to run for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination. She was a politician. She was the first black woman, African-American woman, elected to the United States Congress. You know, Shirley Chisholm broke a lot of barriers and she opened a lot of doors for women of all races to walk through, including Hillary Clinton. And yet you very, very rarely, you know, hear the name Shirley Chisholm. We're not really taught about Shirley Chisholm in school, just like we're not really taught about Dr. Myra Adelaide Logan in school, the first woman, you know, to, to perform open heart surgery. And as Hillary Clinton kind of trended and I'm with her kind of trended, you know, again, you see this, this, this sort of what I got into in my in my Wonder Woman video also you see this line that's drawn in the sand because of race you see how mainstream feminism how mainstream white feminism really uplifts white women while while straight up ignoring you know black women and other women of color because it's it's mainstream feminism and mainstream white feminism is built on you know the foundation of white supremacy you know and the fact that you know white women are are, are the are the leaders you know they're 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 the women that are you know leading the charge and they're the women that are doing everything and similar to how white supremacy says that you know white people do everything and in particular white men 
mainstream feminism and white feminism is really not for the most part trying to to dismantle oppressive systems they're just trying to trade one oppressive system for another they want to sit at the table with the, with white men kind of like what i talked about with kanye west they want to sit at the table with white men they don't want to let all women of color and black women you know they don't want us to all be equal they just want to get the same benefits and privileges as white men and that's all they really care about because mainstream feminism and white feminism is rooted in white supremacy so Anthony started tweeting about Shirley Chisholm and about some other, um, you know, black women politicians that have kind of made waves over the years. And he was like, oh, you know, like, let's come up with this hashtag to celebrate, you know, black women. Black women did that. And the hashtag just took off. So um, please make sure you go through the links because a lot of the, the links to the articles kind of um, stockpiled some of the best tweets and the most informative tweets. Um, I also did a rendition of it on my Instagram. So if you want to check out my Instagram, I'll have a link to that so you can see um, as well. Let me see if I can open Instagram. So a couple more. Aaliyah, who was the youngest female artist ever to perform at the Oscars. Black women did that. Um, Gwendolyn Brooks, the first African-American woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for Literature. Black women did that. Jackie Ormez was the first African-American woman to work as a professional newspaper cartoonist. Uh, Jesse Maple was the first black woman admitted to the New York Camera Operators Union as an indie filmmaker. Uh, Cheryl White, who became the first African-American woman jockey at age 17. Claudette Colvin, who at age 15 in 1955 was arrested for refusing to give up her seat on the bus. This was way before Rosa Parks did it, but Claudette Calvin was a dark-skinned, unwed mother who was only 15, so they kind of swept her up under the rug because most of the first civil rights movement really rested squarely on this respectability. You guys know how I feel about respectability, but Claudette Calvin, you know... Of course, Dr. Myra Adele Logan, who was the first woman ever to perform open heart surgery. It was just a it was just a really, really amazing, wonderful, uplifting, uplifting hashtag that trended for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And it was really just like, you know, go through this hashtag and get your fucking life. Now, of course, the hashtag immediately had detractors, naysayers, and, and racist pushback and trolls. But that's to be expected. What I want to talk about in this video is not the racists and the trolls, but the black people and especially the black women that I saw because I was going through the tag because I was like retweeting and retweeting and retweeting to kind of keep the momentum going for the tag. And I saw a lot of black people in the tag and black women specifically. I mostly saw black women doing this in the tag that were kind of like, this hashtag is not gonna do anything or this hashtag is not gonna go anywhere or um you know oh i'm gonna go to sleep and i'm gonna wake up and this, this hashtag is gonna be overran by trolls and racists and i'm just like waiting for it to happen just like very defeatist like very self-defeated attitude and i like went on a couple of like these people's timelines and i even saw people that were like like basically sidestepping the whole hashtag and they were not retweeting like the positive tweets they were only retweeting like negative tweets like like oh see i told you this hashtag like wasn't gonna be shit like look at these people like running up in it and talking shit and look at this racist person and look at this troll and but they did not and this was a, bl a black girl but they did not retweet not a single actual black woman did that positive tweet they were just like basically using their platform, using their Twitter to like boost up the negativity to like say like, oh, see, I knew that this hashtag wasn't going to do shit, but like bring out trolls and racists. And like, look, like, look, I'm going to like retweet all of them so that like everybody can see it. And it was just like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you doing that? Like, I feel like so many people fall into this trap of rewarding negative behavior and giving it all this attention, even to the point where they literally ignore like good behavior, like I don't want to say good behavior, you know, but just sticking with the example, like they literally ignore the, the and the positivity on that hashtag far, far outweighed the negativity. You literally ignore positivity and empowerment 
to reward all this bullshit with attention. And it's just like, why? Like, it's like with children, like they say the best thing they do about a temper tantrum is ignore it. You're literally like rewarding this online, this e temper tantrum with all this fucking attention. And like a part of me gets it because like I like to roast and crack jokes as much as the next person. But like a lot of the times this wasn't even roasting. This wasn't even cracking jokes. This was just really like this defeated like, like, oh, it's, it's, this hashtag is going to turn shitty, you know, like, you're literally sidestepping something amazing and positive, and you're jumping, like, straight into, well, this shit is going to turn into trash anyway, watch, and I see that a lot, and I know people like that in real life, too, they're just, like, very negative, and they're just, like, full of, like, bitterness and they have just this defeatist attitude like motherfucking like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh like well that's just not gonna work anyway so I'm not even going to try so I'm not even going to you know retweet a nice tweet about a black woman that did something fucking amazing and positive I'm just gonna go straight into and I see this on Tumblr a lot too like and like I said, it's mo I mostly see this from black women. It's like a really interesting phenomenon. Like, and I've talked about this before in my video on dating. I follow this guy on, on Tumblr that he's like, you know, my point is to uplift black women. So I run this whole account where all I want to do is uplift black women. And I reblog black couples. And he like writes poetry dedicated to black women. And it's like, you know... All my whole point of like why I'm here like in this social media you know sphere is to uplift black women and to show them that you know me as a black man like I do love them and there's like lots of black men out there that love them like very positive you know really trying to like because as I've said before 86% of black men currently are married you know that are married that are currently married are married to black women so that leaves a very 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 tiny tiny minority of only 14% that are married outside of the race. So all those people that you see talking all that smack are a very vocal minority, but they are a minority. But yet you have a black man that's part of the majority that may be a silent majority, but it is a majority that says, you know, well, I'm going to be vocal and I'm going to use my platform to speak up. And he gets like so much hate from black women that are like, well, like I remember I saw a post where he had like written a poem and he had like, put these really nice pictures of black couples and and this girl had reblogged it and was like well you know you're something like your brothers your brothers hate us so I don't even know why you're like pretending or like something like real nasty and he reblogged like I don't even know why you're coming at me like that like this is how I really feel like my whole purpose is to try to like uplift and and you know I'm trying to like do something positive like why are you coming at me like as if I did something wrong you know and I see that a lot I see that a lot and I see that a lot with various hashtags I see that a lot with just various you know various things that you try to do to uplift and, and bring joy oh well you know let's try and like support black owned businesses oh well black owned businesses are not good quality anyway and you know people oh I I have made on twitter um the thread of black owned businesses right like oh do you guys want a master thread of black owned businesses so I have made the master thread somebody retweeted it they quoted it and put like oh look great look a black a black person oh great look another list that y'all niggas not gonna use like what do you get out of that for anyone that does that that's watching this video or like for those of y'all that like have some type of insight because I really don't understand it it's really baffling to me like what do people get out of that what do you get out of that? What do you get out of being the sour apple fucking bitter bitch in the fucking crowd? Like, what do you get out of that? Like, that shit is not cute. Like, you're not cute. You're not contrarian. You're not playing devil's advocate. Like, you're just a dick. Like, you're just a dick. And, and I don't, like I said, like, I don't know what they're getting out of it. Like, it's almost like they're trying to prove something. Like, what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove when you say, like, oh, great, another list that y'all niggas not gonna use? Like, what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove when you fucking hop, skip, and jump through the black women did that tag, specifically looking for trolls and racists that you can retweet and say, see, I told you this hashtag wasn't going to do shit. What are you trying to prove? That shitty people exist? We know. That trolls and racists are going to run up in anything attempting to empower black people and black women specifically? We know. We know this. Why are you giving them such a platform over people that are actually 
trying to uplift you. Like, the shit is wild to me. Like, the shit is really wild. Like, again, like I said before in my Black Joy is a Revolution video, a lot of people relate their, you know, their wokeness or their resistance or their being witty or being smart or their revolution, you know, they relate these things to struggle and pain and fucking bitterness and negativity and like that's how they prove something to themselves like that's how they validate themselves like well this shit ain't gonna do shit anyway so it doesn't even matter and so I don't have to do shit because it's not gonna matter anyway right like fucking energy fucking vampires that just like feed off of negativity and bullshit and nonsense and it sucks because it's like they're just already coming from this place of defeat like they're already in this headspace of well, the hashtag's being overrun, so let's just be down about it from jump, you know, uh, of, well, I don't care about the black men that are out there fucking rooting for me. I'm gonna just fucking give all my attention to the ones that don't. Like, they're defeated. They're defeated. And that is how they quantify their resistance is through fucking defeat, is through being defeated, is through being broke down, is being not even able to enjoy something as simple as a fucking hashtag because you're cowering in anticipation of like racist negativity. And it's like, that is what white supremacy wants. Like white supremacy wants you defeated. White supremacy wants you broke down. White supremacy wants you not even able to enjoy something as simple as a fucking hashtag because you're like cowering in anticipation of racist negativity. That is what white supremacy wants. It wants you broken and sad and depressed and fucked up all the time. And of course, sometimes you can't avoid that. I'm not like demanding that you like fucking be well, bitch. I'm not demanding that. But, you know, I'm not ordering anybody to be happy. But like sometimes you can. Sometimes you can enjoy something simple and fun and light and have a good time, you know, instead of retreating into this default position of defeat automatically, you know, and raining on other people's parades and pissing in their cereal and kicking over their fucking sandcastles. And I just hate that shit. And I hate that shit. And I see it all the time. And it's just like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Oh, it's not going to work. So why even try? Like, damn, like, you were definitely the slave that was getting left behind during the fucking escape. Like, you were the one talking about masks are going to catch us and beat us, so we should just stay. Like, you can keep that defeatist attitude, you know. It's, it's, for anyone watching this, like, you don't, you don't give up before you try is all I'm going to say because that's what white supremacy wants. And it's very funny because... I was um, thinking about this video and I literally said to myself, like, you know, being defeated and being broke down, you know, and, 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 you know, being preemptively defeated to not even try. I thought to myself and I like made a note, like, that's what white supremacy wants. Like, I have to make sure I say this in my video. And it's funny because Cat Black put out this really great series of tweets on saturday friday saturday and one of the tweets said i have it here i'm gonna read it to you guys hold on one of the tweets said white supremacy's goal is to tire you into silence it's to waste your time and beat you down so that whiteness rises to the top and that's just like very true very succinct very you know that is what it's about so do not let this shit defeat you before you even try and don't even, don't let us steal these little moments of joy like that hashtag was a moment of joy for me it really was and those moments are what keep you going through the charlestons you know those little moments people say all the time like oh seren like how do i keep going and things like that you know like those little moments the little comments that i get someone left me a wonderful 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 comment about you know, Saran, I never thought that I would meet anyone, and I, I met someone that I feel like I'm falling in love with, and I, I feel like a big part of that was because, you know, I, I watched some of your videos, and I took some of your advice to remove myself from certain, you know, toxic circles, and, you know, dealing with people that operate in certain ways and have a certain mindset, and, you know, not basically, you know, like not putting up with it and not putting up with microaggressions and not dealing with certain things and, you know, working on how how do I feel about myself and the energy that I'm putting out and like, oh, and I like, you know, met somebody that I'm able to talk to about race and about, you know, things going on in the world and someone that's not looking at me like I'm fucking crazy and, and, you know, like those type of comments, like that's the, these little moments, hash, fun hashtags and shit. 
that's the shit that gets you through the super fucked up shit. So please take the time. Have you practiced self-care today? As I always say, to practice self-care. To Even if practicing self-care is something as silly as enjoying a hashtag, like, do that shit. Like, do that shit. Um, so I just wanted to make a video about that because I thought it was really important. And again, self-care and, you know, finding revolution and joy is not something that I think we talk about enough. So I'm going to keep talking about it on my channel and hopefully you guys are practicing self-care. Please, please go through the links because there was just tons and tons and tons of really, really, really amazing information. I was literally screen capping links to go through to look up people later. So maybe I'll also include um, some links to some, to some black women and, and some amazing things that they've done. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.